For this tutorial and now we're going to start to build the crank mechanism. The first part is drawing uh, the start of the mechanism within this hole. So we click on this left face, we can start the sketch and draw the circle. Snap it to the middle so you know exactly where it is and then add your dimension to the outside which is 15 millimeters. Okay, and if you've forgotten where that 15 millimeters comes from, we can check it in this hole here. So we can just draw that in there as well. Make sure that's 15. You can see that I hadn't actually dimensioned it before and it was still 14.8 and not quite exact. So it's a good job we've been back in to check that as well. Then we're going to extrude from sketch four and we're going to send that the other way, making sure that new part is selected at the top. Now, what we want to make sure is as we're creating this crank, we need parts that are higher and lower for each piston and we need to make sure they're lining up with the center. So we're going to change the center of the hole that is shaded to hidden edges. Clicking on the cube here, just below the cube that you use to position the view of your drawing, we're going to select shaded with hidden edges and you can see where these holes are. So we know that if we put 50 mil into this extrude, that is bang in the middle of the, the hole where the piston is going to fit. So we're going to actually take that back to 30 millimeters and that will give us space to build the attachment. In fact, if we take that back even further to 20, that's still going to be absolutely perfect. Okay, so we can finish that there. The next thing that we're going to do is draw on this face. Actually, that's changed away from the new that I selected back to add. So if I go back into extrude for edit, I need to make sure it's left on new when I click the tick. So it's a different color for me to be able to see. Click on that surface. I'm going to start a new sketch on the right hand side of our, our crank part now. And I'm going to look at it from the back as well so that I can see exactly what I'm drawing. I'm going to draw quite a big circle on here, which is going to form part of the crank. I'm going to dimension that as well at 65. I think we can get away with 70 millimeters and it'll still fit. So I can click on the tick. Okay. So you can see we'll be turning this part and the center and this whole wheel will be moving round. So if I extrude that sketch five selected from my features pane, if I just make that 10 millimeters thick, it's nice and robust, nice and chunky. And I'm going to click the tick on there. I'm now going to select this surface, sketch on there, look at it from the back again so I can see where I'm positioning the circle. And we're going to put that onto here. We're going to dimension it so it's consistent with the others to make the diameter 15. And I'm going to make the distance from here to the edge of this. I'm going to make that 15 too so it's much closer to the top. And I'm fairly happy with that. When I position the next two, I want them to be at a nice triangle. So what you could do is start drawing out that triangle in anticipation now. But for me, I'm fairly happy with that. I'm just going to check the distance from there. Check that's in the middle. We want that to be 40. Okay, so we're 15 up, we're 40 from the centre. We can position the others roughly in these corners. We won't worry too much about the geometry in this tutorial. So we'll finish that sketch there, rotate it round, extrude, and we're going to extrude that circle. Look at it from the right again. It just helps you think about things, helps you line them up. So we want the center of this to come down and attach onto there. And we really want this now to finish somewhere in this middle region here. This one as well in the future, we could actually get closer to the side so that it spins with less interference of the piston, get this edge out the way of this edge maybe. Okay, so let's extrude this now. Let's go ahead and do that 75, see where we're left at. So 75 looks good, slightly overlapping there, but once we move this back, it might help out. So I'm going to hover over my extrudes on the left. I've found the one I want. I'm going to edit it. And I'm just going to make that now 15 millimeters and click tick. And you can see that this edge and this part here, they no longer overlap. So that means my piston head will fit perfectly in this one as well not overlapping at the moment but actually i need to take 10 mil off for adding my next circle on so extrude six right click edit and we're going to take 10 mil off there so we're going to take that down to 65 and confirm it draw a new circle on the end here and it's going to become just a very slightly repetitive process for a moment so when we're drawing this circle now if we look at it from the back it makes it far easier 
we want it to be from the center of this out and we want to dimension it exactly the same so we've made that 70 we made that 40 and then the distance from the bottom as well we made that 50 okay so we've got that in exactly the same position rotate round extrude that out now select and sketch seven from your features list so it selects the whole circle and not the donut which you would select otherwise select 10 millimeters in thickness just to keep that consistent and you can see our crank is slowly starting to build so that is going to move around in a circle as we rotate this one so if we offset the next one and once we attach them to the pistons they'll move at different heights at different parts so we'll select this surface sketch let's draw another circle like i said this part does get a little bit repetitive looking at it from the back i'm going to draw the circle roughly in this region let's dimension it so we're making this 15 we're going to move we're just going to dimension these for now and we can always worry about exactly how they're looking later on so we made it 15 before and then we're fairly happy with that there we could always move it further away with this dimension so if we made that smaller it's going to have to move it to make it work okay so 20 from the side looks like it's going to create a fairly decent triangle so if we just remember that 15 15 20 when we create the next circle it's going to have to be the same so it looks nice okay and it'll work better as well not just all about aesthetics honest we can finish that sketch let's extrude selecting the circle and then looking at it from the right hand side again and we want it 10 mil shy of that line so if we just drag that across roughly it should be 75 again minus 10 it's given us a 65 tick that draw on the end sketch look at it from the back draw your circle and you might need just to dimension it again okay so we're 50 or 40 from this edge 50 from the bottom sorry just getting myself confused now so we've got 50 in there and then we're making a size 70 diameter tick that extrude let's get a good look at it and remember i'm not selecting it like that because it'll leave the hole you could select the other face on top of it but i'm going to stop that select sketch 9 from the extrude list 10 millimeters and I can press the green tick, so we're nearly done. Next one, we're gonna draw on this face, sketch, look at it from the back, draw my circle in roughly where you want it so the dimensions don't make it jump about too far. Let's get that diameter in at 15. Distance from the circle, if we remember, was 15 as well. And distance from the edge was 20. So you can see they're positioned in a half decent triangle i think they should be a little bit lower if we we're worried more about the geometry but we're not for now then extrude select the circle and look at it from the right hand side again so we need that to come all the way across to here so that gap is 25 to the edge minus 10 for the thickness okay we need to leave 10 for this so we're at 15 from the end if we take it roughly to the end that's telling us it's 65 so if we extrude this 50 that's going to be about okay for this last crank so we're going to click tick okay so you can see now we've got our tick our final two parts now to finish so this circle sketch look at it from the back draw your big circle in and we're going to then dimension this 70 70 not 71 enter we're going to dimension from the bottom 50 and 40 tick extrude 11 from there make it 10 and we're done so the final part now we'll select this surface not the edge the surface so you see one's bright orange sketch on there look at it from the back and draw the final circle and you'll be pleased to know it is the final circle on the crank this is probably the most repetitive of the processes but actually quite satisfying once it's done so we're going to dimension that up to make sure we are perfect so we've done it on every single step so far so 15 to there i'd locked it to the middle so we are good to go 
extrude that make sure select sketch because it's hard to see so it's easier to select from your sketch on here and i'm just going to change this from blind to up to face and that allows me to select the face where i want it to go through to finish and i want to add this and the merge scope is with part two okay i don't know why it moved it to new automatically it shouldn't have done but if it does just keep an eye and you'll see because the color may change so we can click tick on there now and you can see we've got that crank sat inside the casing ready to start trying to attach all of our pistons to okay so the only parts we're going to create now are the actual piston head and the arm to attach onto the crank and we may even um, create a crank handle or something off the end here to allow you to spin that around if we create that as a separate part it improves our assembly capabilities later on as well good luck